Hello, hello everyone. I am Eileen Kuntai uh, from Koch University Graduate School of Social Sciences and Humanities. I am the director of the Graduate School of Social Sciences and uh, Humanities in Koch University. And we are hosting this uh, webinar uh, with the vice director who's uh, Professor Özlem Altan Olcay. Uh, she's a professor of international relations here and also uh, Tuche Shatana, who is the administrative and academic coordinator of our graduate school. You may have been in contact with her uh, before. So welcome, welcome to our uh, webinar. And I'm gonna try and introduce to you uh, our programs and our status, some uh, news about our graduates. And you may have some questions arising as we go along. And uh, I don't think I'll be able to see those questions right now, but we are keeping uh, you know, a record of those questions at the end. If you have a chance, I'll be able to answer so some of them. So please type your questions uh, to the chat box uh, that you see on your uh, screen in this uh, meeting. Okay, so uh, the, here are some pictures from the Graduate School of uh, Social uh, Sciences and Humanities staff. You see myself on the uh, left, top left uh, picture and Özlem is in the top right picture and Tuche, who I mentioned, who is the Academic and Administrative Coordinator, is in the very middle there. Uh, we have uh, Inji in the, uh, in the uh, bottom left, Inji Dursundar, Reporting and Planning Assistant Specialist, and we have Gülçin Erdiş, who is an Administrative Assistant, who you see a picture of too. And this is the staff, and we are managing a graduate school, which is a big uh, graduate school, actually. We have many programs, around 30 programs many PhD programs, many MA programs, as you see on the, on the, uh, in the left box. And we have a number of current students who are currently active and enrolled are around 350, uh, many PhD students, many MA students, as you see, 180 uh, PhD students, 125 MA students. And also uh, LLM means the law school. These are the students who are in uh, our uh, public and private law master's programs. These are the numbers. Uh, in the very right box, in the purple box, you see the number of uh, graduates. We have already 594 graduates. I'm going to tell you some stories about uh, our graduates. And we are pr very proud to have, we have more graduates than uh, students right now in our uh, graduate school who has been running uh, since 2013 for some programs, but some of the programs are pretty new. And here is the next slide about the programs that we have. We have uh, 29 graduate programs. They are distributed uh, in many uh, colleges, like the College of uh, Social Sciences and Humanities, College of Engineering, College of Business Administration, and Economics and Law. Uh, as you see uh, on the left, you see the list of MA programs, MA programs in uh, design technology and uh, society, international relations, philosophy, you can read through all these MA programs. Uh, we, have a, uh, we have a new MA program in clinical psychology, it's a MA program that requires a thesis, and we have a new uh, program in applied public policy, uh, with it's a joint program with a, a university uh, of uh, with the University of Static Light and it's a non thesis program. And you can see the list on the left for our MA programs. When you switch to our PhD programs, which are on the listed on the right, uh, you see uh, you know some of the same programs in their PhD versions, uh, basically. Okay, these are some programs which we've been running. Uh, for a long time, quite successful, actually. Okay, so what is our mission in general? It's very, very hard to uh, specify a general mission for a school uh, or a graduate school so diverse. You know, we have design uh, uh, professors and students in our programs. We have psychology, we have IR, we have archeology, span we have a new philosophy uh, master's program, but we give uh, a lot of emphasis to conducting high quality research 
which contributes to universal scientific uh, knowledge at large and also very specific social policies in Turkey and beyond, of course. Uh, so this is our very general mission. We want to do work that is informed by research, scientific and knowledge, and uh, you know, also some applied uh, public policy research as well. Okay, uh, so PhD programs, uh, we have, as, as I said, we have PhD, we accept PhD programs and, uh, Sorry, we accept PhD students and MA students as researchers here. Uh, and uh, it's not only PhD programs, but we have MA students who are conducting top-notch research here too. Uh, and they end up as, a lot of them end up as researchers or faculty members to work in universities here in Turkey and abroad in, uh, in quite nice positions. I mean, say young uh, graduate school now, but uh, I will show you some of the examples later. So we have a lot of uh, research emphasis. Okay, so what does it mean that, uh, you know, at an undergraduate level, uh, usually if you feel that you are more of a student and of course you work with your uh, professors, you may have been involved in some research and so on, but at an MA level, you're already a collaborator for certain research projects you may be able to initiate your own research ideas if you agree with your advisor and if your committee. And at the PhD level, you are quite of a colleague already. So we are in an environment where we learn from each other. I mean, I'm an advisor to several MA and PhD students, and I really give importance to learning with them, from them, uh, at, you know, in the graduate school. So we conduct research together, we publish together, we go to conferences together, sometimes as a group of uh, large students. Uh, we have a lot of seminars together uh, and so forth. So it is a really collaborative environment and also sometimes an interdisciplinary environment where you see a lot of interdisciplinary work, let's say between uh, international relations and sociology or between design, technology, society, and psychology. I mean, there are lots of different examples which, uh, uh, of collaborative work here. Okay, so what does it not mean now? You, you won't be an undergraduate anymore if you were, then we don't measure success with grades only. You may get high grades, but if you are not involved in research uh, in a very active, proactive way almost, uh, we don't want that to happen. So uh, we really want you uh, to come here prepared to conduct research, to be involved in it as an active participant. So you don't wait until somebody assigns you to a research project and attend the seminars that are available only if it's mandatory. So you're gonna be seeking and searching for your uh, way to make your impact basically. And of course we were gonna help you in, uh, in doing that. Uh, so I, I, I mean, there are some examples here in this slide, what it doesn't mean, but basically we want you to raise new ideas, new perspectives, uh, work with challenging professors. If, even if you heard they are too challenging, that's what uh, we want you to do. Okay, now this is just a little uh, numerical or a graphical uh, slide which shows the uh, ALES and G uh, ALES scores uh, and GPA of students admitted last year. This is, uh, you know, combining MA and PhD. Usually we don't have differences in their, uh, in their you know, the, uh, test scores usually or GPAs when we admit them to our different programs because we admit MA students as researchers. This is called, sometimes called research uh, masters in some European countries. We are really having them uh, doing um, research masters. So they are pretty high, the averages, these are the averages for you that, just to uh, see what the averages are. Okay, and it has been shifting, you know, 2019 are the uh, red ones and, uh, you know, we, we've been strong in the last three years and it's even getting stronger, I think, in that respect. Okay, there is lots of research opportunities. Here is a list, a sort of a extraction uh, that we did 
from the many research centers that we have. We, we have research centers dedicated to conducting research on migration or uh, antique and Byzantine studies or archaeological sciences or globalization and democratic governance, economic research, and so on. And we have research labs as well, which includes things like conservation uh, lab, archaeological sciences lab, and lots of different uh, psychology labs, such as social interaction and media lab, timing and decision-making lab, uh, leadership lab. These are labs that you can uh, go online and explore. Of course, they are run by, a, by one, one faculty or more, and they, have, uh, they may have active uh, uh, websites or also uh, some, some of them have also a social media uh, presence too. So you can explore them, you know, depending on your field. I'm aware I'm talking to a very diverse audience right now, so I won't be able to give you specific information right, right now about all these. Okay, and we try to also, we have a little budget that uh, through which we can invite uh, quite distinguished scholars. This, this is called our Distinguished uh, Scholar uh, Program. Here are some examples uh, that you see on the screen, you know, some uh, professors that you may recognize here from their names, uh, but we have a huge list. This is just some examples that we fit into this slide. Uh, and you can take a look at it later too. Okay, uh, and graduate students, once they come here, of course they start with taking uh, courses and also uh, taking, uh, you know, be being involved in research groups and all that. And uh, we try, I mean, they are pretty supportive, but then, you know, the university also has uh, a support structure for each program let's say for a psychology program we have a coordinator for the clinical psychology program we have a new clinical psychology program we have a new coordinator for the archaeology program uh, archaeology and artistry program we have two coordinators actually uh, currently for each of these programs that we listed we have our office okay uh, of which you saw the pictures, you know, I'm talking on behalf of the office to you now, but we have also individual program coordinators that gives you support before you enter the program and also during your uh, tenure in the program as well. We have a well-functioning academic writing center. As you all know, many of us are, will be writing in our second or third languages. And we know about the challenge, all of us. Uh, so we have a uh, you know one-on-one -on -one consultation in addition to courses that will help you start with writing there. Because as I said, we are uh, looking at uh, the futures researchers here. So we help them with writing their work in the relevant venues such as journal articles, books, uh, you know, even uh, social media blogs and all that. And uh, we have a very important office and learning and teaching here, Coach Office uh, uh, Cult, it's uh, abbreviated as, and uh, you may get support uh, from those. We do get a lot of support uh, from Cult these days, for example, in uh, turning some of our classes into, you know, remote teaching, online teaching uh, uh, venues. We have a career office. We have an exchange office. I mean, some of our students go for an exchange for a semester or more uh, if their research calls for it. So we have a grant office. Uh, grant office means that uh, uh, if you, you know, with your advisor or yourself, you want to apply for a, a, a grant or a research grant to you know basically either after your PhD or master's or during that they will help you in preparing your proposals and uh, and we give a lot of importance to and we should give a lot of importance to well-being of students psychological uh, mental health of students we have a psychological counseling services uh, dedicated to that as well Okay, uh, now uh, I just want to mention our tuition paying programs uh, that we are running currently. Uh, 
These are the LLM, private and public law programs, and our new clinical psychology uh, programs. These are uh, the students who are uh, enrolled in these programs uh, are going to be asked to pay full or partial uh, tuition. And uh, also to, in the non-thesis programs, uh, students admitted to uh, non-thesis programs, they also pay uh, full or partial uh, tuition. And you can check the, the specific uh, information, uh, the specific information for these programs, including the, the tuition information. You can go to the uh, websites. There's the Applied Public Policy Program, which is a non-thesis program, also uh, requires tuition. Okay, and uh, the non-tuition MA thesis programs are listed here. There's a tuition waiver for archaeology and history of art, comparative studies in history and society, design, technology, and society, economics, international relations, philosophy, and psychology. Uh, these are uh, students are mostly admitted with tuition waiver here. And the limited number of students, if they are MA students, they may receive stipend based on their merit, academic merit. And uh, MA thesis students also may be funded by external uh, sources. A lot of our students are funded by uh, TUBITAC or the current projects that our faculty members serve as pr principal investigators, they may hire MA thesis students on these two. Okay, so all MA thesis students admitted to this, these programs that are listed above in the slide are offered uh, either housing aid or shared dorm housing, if we have housing availability, private health insurance with some limited coverage, travel budget to attend academic conferences in their field, uh, sometimes financial support to attend extra trainings that don't happen on the coach campus, like summer school, summer internships, and financial support for uh, research-related expenses, student exchange possibilities also with foreign uh, universities. These are uh, some of the uh, benefits that we offer for uh, MA uh, students. Now, PhD programs, all PhD programs admit students with tuition waiver. And students are also offered, if they are PhD students, shared office space, shared housing or housing aid, meal card, private health insurance with some limited coverage, and monthly stipends based on academic merit. So PhD students receive uh, monthly stipends. Uh, they may also be recruited for certain uh, projects that uh, their you know, advisors or other faculty are running. But if not, then they still get monthly stipends if they are PhD students. We have a uh, budget, travel budget for academic conferences, again, as for MA, support for extra training, support for dissertation related uh, research expenses, and also exchange possibilities. Okay, so now uh, some examples from recent years. Again, you know, take these as examples. We keep also in the last one and a half years or so, we've been also putting on our social media sites you, which you can follow uh, you know uh, you know what kind of placements our phd students have had a lot of them ha have academic jobs i mean postdocs included of course postdocs are academic jobs uh, postdoctoral researcher positions basically at universities such as duke university essex university obviously many in turkey Koch university itself Özyen University, Sabancı University, and so on. Here is, we replicate, uh, we, 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 I noticed now we mentioned Koç University <laughs> twice somehow, I guess, <laughs> uh, inadvert inadvertently, but of course, I mean, some of, the, uh, some of these students continue as po uh, postdocs at our university too, and we are trying to increase that as well, postdoc opportunities for our own graduates. Okay, non-academic job placements, of our MA and PhD graduates. Uh, and they, you know, you see a list, I'm not going to read through it, but Central Bank of Turkey, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, 
Museum of Modern Arts in New York, HSBC, are some of the examples that are mentioned here. And uh, how about our graduates of our MA programs? Remember, most of our MAs are research uh, masters people, and they, uh, they actually uh, apply for PhD abroad. Some of them do. Some of them uh, also stay with Koch University PhD programs. And here is a list of universities that our graduates have been placed in recently. You know, uh, some very good universities, as you can tell from the list. Okay. And here are some examples where our PhD students just last year in 2019 to 2020 went for research, basically. They went to universities such as uh, Oxford University or York University or Utrecht University or UPenn, University of Pennsylvania, to do temporary research with some colleagues uh, in those uh, universities. So that is possible. Here is uh, some of the screenshots uh, that we've been actually uh, putting up on, in the social media. Uh, for, for our uh, Graduate School of Social Sciences and Humanities. So we've been, uh, these are of course, uh, you know, these are some successes that we are proud of that are run by students. So a new award, for example, in the Department of uh, Sociology uh, or a new publication that a graduate student is a co-author of, uh, Basically, we try to publish it. This is, you know, just six examples that we fit into this slide. We have many more. And these, I mean, these are evidence for active research work that graduate students take the lead of, actually, at Koch University. Here are also another six examples from our graduates, well, alumni, basically. Uh, all, all of these people have PhDs in different fields, and you're going to see where they are placed at. Uh, for example, PhD in psychology, the uh, at assistant professor at Özyeğin University, another one at Kadir Has University. Many actually in Kadir Has and Özyeğin University are our graduates. Uh, maybe I, I, I won't name them, even these, I'm not naming them. These are just uh, examples, basically, Ushik University, and also abroad. You know, there, is pe there are people who are working abroad, uh, Apple in San Francisco, or City University of London, uh, another one, you know, a postdoctoral researcher in an important uh, technology university in Finland, and so on. So uh, these you can check probably on our Instagram, as it, the slide says more on Instagram, if you want to check what, they are, what our graduates are doing. Okay, now let's come to you. If you are deciding to apply, we really welcome that. Uh, we, want, we invite you to apply. So your application package should have a statement of purpose, okay? Your application package should have two letters of reference for MA applicants and three letters of reference for PhD applicants. We have to have, you have to send in the relevant transcripts. And of course, depending on the program that you're applying, uh, you may have to submit a research proposal, a writing sample, and so forth, okay? Now, coming to ALES GRE scores and language scores, like TOEFL, YEDSA, YUKTIL scores, uh, at this time, uh, as you may know, some of these scores may not be available during the time of application. But you have to submit the scores to us as soon as they become available, uh, if you submit all your other documents, and if your application is found successful on the basis of those documents, we may be able to apply you conditionally, but uh, your application will not be completed without these test scores. So we're going to be watching what's happening uh, about uh, the availability of these uh, different kinds of tests uh, to everyone, basically. Okay. And make sure that you check your specific program that you are interested in from, for program specific uh, requirements. Okay, and here are, I mean, the links, and these will be all published at some point, but uh, the, here are the links um, uh, for 
checking application requirements program by program uh, and please make sure to check what you're interested in uh, as soon as possible and there are uh, also other useful links that uh, we, we are providing here uh, don't make try to make a note right now because we are going to send you i mean uh, uh, we're going to broadcast this uh, after a while i think we're going to post this talk i mean the you know what i'm saying right now along with these slides on the on the web and on, and on our websites uh, pretty soon okay okay so i mean we are uh, we are really excited to receive applications uh, your applications uh, really really excited and uh, we have different deadlines for different programs and the soonest is, is i know that it's the third of april for certain programs and we have that uh, deadline of course you know uh, you know we may extend deadlines and not depending on the situation but we don't see any reason to postpone anything right now so we are very, very excited uh, to take in uh, your applications as soon as possible and at the latest of, uh, on the 3rd of April for certain programs. Of course, certain other programs have deadlines until June and so on. But uh, I mean, please apply. If you're ready, if you feel ready and excited to apply, please do apply. Okay, and you can of course email us if you have any questions, you're emailing to Cheshatana, who you saw a picture of uh, on our second slide at the very beginning. Uh, email us if you have any questions. And now I'm going to see if I, uh, if I can get the questions that you've been asking during this session and uh, try, to, try to answer them. Okay. Uh, now, uh, Tuche Shatana tells me through my WhatsApp that there is 101 participants. That's a great number. We usually have slightly smaller uh, participants if we run it, you know, uh, physically. I don't remember last year. Maybe we had close to this. So that's great. So I really, uh, you know, I'm very happy for your participation. Thanks, each of you. Now, so I, I will try to answer these questions, some of them at least. So you, some, uh, one of you is asking if there is a change in application deadlines due to the virus. Well, as I said, not now. No, we're not changing the application deadlines. We may, you know, I mean, we can always change the application deadlines for any purpose anyway. But right now, we don't see any reason to change the application deadlines. Change in science exam dates. No, we don't have any uh, changes in the science exam dates. Like if you are talking about, let's say, IR or uh, IR probably doesn't have it, but psychology science exam, we're not uh, changing it right now. If we change it, you're going to, you know, you're going to hear about it. Okay. Uh, but some, uh, some programs, of course, may delay the science exam dates, but not. Uh, we're not announcing any change right now. We're not changing anything. So uh, can you work while doing PhD? I don't know what you mean by working, but since you're getting uh, uh, basically tuition waiver and, uh, and uh, uh, you know, uh, basically a stipend, a monthly uh, stipend for working here as RA and TA, uh, probably you won't be able to work while doing PhD. Uh, science exam for specific psychology, specific field or li uh, literacy. We usually care for in the psychology uh, science exam. In, uh, we basically care for uh, scientific psychological knowledge, but very generally. It won't be specific to a certain uh, field of psychology. Uh, any special criteria for monthly stipend for PhD? I don't know what you mean by that, uh, special criteria for monthly stipend for PhD. Yes, I mean, the, it's uh, stipends for PhD students are based on academic merit. And also, of course, their ongoing performance during the program. And uh, once they pass, I mean, PhD students have to pass a qualifying exam uh, at some point in the, in the program. Once they pass it, their uh, stipend increases, by the way. Tuition waiver for clinical psychology MA program. 
they will be tuition waivers uh, will probably be available but they'll be quite 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 limited uh, apply to phd not admitted can i be admitted to ma or should i apply separately uh -huh. the committees uh, may be different uh, for ma and phd uh, if you're considering both of these programs, both MA and PhD, you're, you, we, I can recommend you to apply to both. Okay, some programs ask for motivation letters, some for statement of purpose. Uh, do you use them interchangeably? Whatever the program is asking, they are very similar anyway at heart, but uh, no, we don't use them interchangeably. Programs are, you know, like a program in psychology is pretty independent from a program in archaeology and they may use different terms and uh, they have a reason for using different terms. Uh, so we don't use them interchangeably necessarily. What are the academic merit needed for MA? Well, I'm not going to say uh, what, but I showed you basically the, uh, the average GPA, the average LS scores. Of course, you probably may, uh, have more to show about research experience or any kind of professional experience. So uh, I'm not going to be able to say what's the minimum academic merit there. Uh, what if I don't have the required GRE score? Well, you have to, you can retake the GRE and try to, uh, try to get the minimum uh, score that is required by the specific program. Uh, but you can still now apply and re uh, retake the GRE in the future, of course. Okay, most important thing you're looking for in a motivation letter, I, I think I better not uh, explain my answer to it. Uh, I'm not the one who will admit you anyway at the end, yes, but no, uh, the, the specific programs and uh, and basically there is lots of guidance about that. Uh, you know, for different programs out there in the internet too. So who should I get reference letters from? Uh, yes, uh, I mean, of course, academic letters are good if you are a recent student, uh, graduate, undergraduate from an institution recently, but also, you know, if your supervisors in your job can write a good reference letter, why not? Yes, we can. Uh, use them for certain programs at least. Okay, I think there is maybe a couple of more questions or not. Uh, let me see. Okay, let me open this. Okay, if you can, uh, somebody asked if they can apply to our law program, LLM program from a non-law background. The answer is unfortunately no. And to apply to clinical psychology program, also you have to be a graduate of a psychology uh, undergraduate as well. How relevant is TOEFL? Somebody asked, how relevant is the TOEFL score? But we teach in English. Uh, we do our research, we publish in uh, English, and you have to have a documentation of your English performance. And TOEFL score is one of those tests that we accept, and it's relevant in applying. But on the other hand, as I said, if you have delays in taking this exam due to, due to the current conditions, you, uh, we may be able to offer you a conditional acceptance. Details, no, I won't be able to give more details about the psychology science exams right now, but uh, we may be able to uh, offer uh, in, the near, in the very near future uh, a, a seminar, webinar, Skype session with our uh, psychology coordinator and you may actually get information uh, from that.
I'm still uh, scrolling through the questions and I can see now in the chat the kind of questions that arose. Uh, Um, hello, everyone. This is Tuche speaking, actually, and thank you so much for all the questions and all your participation uh, today. Uh, so we summarized some of the questions and I can still see um, I know one of the candidates is asking why this clinical psychology program is uh, not offered as a, on a tuition waiver basis, but there's a program fee. Uh, would you like to answer that? Uh, well, I think, uh, uh, I mean, there is a tuition fee and uh, this is a sort of a semi-professional field, as you know, and although we emphasize research here, we will continue to do that and we are going to have clinical psychologists uh, graduate from this program with, as a clinical psychologist, as a professional with uh, much more knowledge and practice of research with them, which is a plus. Uh, and this is how it is. I think clinical psychology programs all over the world, including Turkey, uh, they actually expect their students to pay uh, tuition and they are going to do that as well. Uh, but uh, as I said, you know, if, uh, depending on your merit, there will be few students uh, who are waived on their tuition. Um, so I also see a question about uh, the law program. So if, you come, if you're coming from a law background, uh, whether it's in European law or any kind of law, you're eligible to apply to the program. Uh, but the Turkish uh, higher education system only uh, asks the students to have a law degree to be able to apply to law, PhD, and master's program. So that, that's the only condition that you have to meet uh, in order to apply. Uh, there's a question about uh, MBA programs. Unfortunately, that's a question to the Graduate School of Business. So I, would, uh, I can share their email address with you and you can um, email them if you want more information about our EMBA programs. Uh, one of the candidates asked if I can apply to PhD if I have a GPA under three. Uh, most programs are looking for a GP, GPA over three for the PhD program, so um, your admission chances would be low. Um, I don't know which program you're specifically asking for, but most programs do look for a GP, GPA of three. Um, so we do not accept GMAT scores, but GRE only. Uh, there's a question about GMAT. Uh, how many students can get scholarships for an MA program? So we do not admit students um, with tuition to international relations program. So all admitted students receive a tuition waiver. Um, for any additional scholarship that's on academic merit basis and the scholarships are uh, very limited, but um, it would be difficult to give a number. Uh, to, it just depends on your um, academic standing and humber, and the pool of applicants. Uh, the juries, committees decide on the uh, candidates who will receive additional scholarship to tuition waiver. Um, so there's also a question to which candidates can receive a tuition waiver for clinical psychology. Uh, that also is the same uh, to international, that depends on your academic merit. There's a very limited number of scholarships that will be offered for clinical psychology. Uh, that I can, we can maybe say one or two uh, students will get tuition waiver, that is. Um, there will be no uh, additional scholarships offered in that program. Um, uh, starting of classes. Uh, in September. So for now, there's not a definite time on when we will start the spring, uh, I mean fall semester. 
Uh, for now, it's as scheduled uh, to open as mid fall, but if there are any changes, we will be announcing it in our academic calendar. Um, okay, uh, let's see. Get in touch with. Uh, students can get in touch with the professors for PhD, particularly if they're thinking about applying to PhD programs. Um, if you have specific questions to the department, I would uh, advise you to send them to me and I will get you in contact with the program coordinator to answer your program specific questions. And um, most of the um, Program coordinators are able to answer those questions, but if you also have faculty specific questions, please send them to me and I'll get you in contact with the faculty members. Uh, the application link, Redmi, I will send it to you. Uh, it's, you can also go through our website and see uh, that on the homepage, there's the application link. It's an online application. So you submit all the, uh, all the paperwork online. You don't have to send us anything. Your references also upload their references through an online system uh, and you enter their email address, they receive an email request and they just upload their documents or they answer the uh, questions in our application system. So um, they don't have to send us anything directly, they can do it through the system. Uh, official transcripts at this time, there may be difficult to get them from your university, so unofficial transcripts are accepted for application. But uh, in the case that you get admitted to the program, you, can, you have to have your official transcripts and that will be in uh, mid-September. Um, what would an excellent master GPA accomplish if for not good batch? Huh. Uh, Okay, that, the question is if I have a strong master's GPA but a low bachelor GPA, uh, would I be considered as a good candidate? That also depends on the program you're applying to. Yes, of course, would compensate for it, uh, but I would have to see uh, which program you're applying to and what their requirements are. Um, for social psychology master's program, we only consider equal weight, ALES uh, score, not verbal, and not quantitative. So you would have to get an equal weight ALES score for that. Um, design technology society program, one question was about that. Yes, they do admit students with a tuition waiver to their master's program with thesis. And uh, there's also scholarships for their PhD program. Design Technology Society program specifically requires that you contact faculty members prior to applying and discuss a research idea, a research topic, because that program admits students with, um, with a project proposal uh, carried on with a faculty member. So uh, those students can also can email me or email the professors directly with their research idea. And so, uh, Jim, you're asking if we have an ALES cutout point, and I know uh, you're interested in archaeology program. Uh, the ALES, so the department specifically did not want to write the ALES score as a cutoff uh, because they're, they're looking at old scores. The cutoff is uh, 55 from verbal or equal weight, but of course, higher scores are, uh, I mean, the higher you get, the more chances uh, you would have to get admitted to the program because it's a, um, like I said, it's a full tuition weight program. So as uh, students are applying on uh, with strong academic merits. So uh, they don't specify it, but uh, it would be good to have a higher ALES score for archaeology master's program. Uh, we're going to... <laughs> What chances has over 45 students? So there is no limit. We don't set particular limits on to how many students we will admit to the program. Uh, that's up to the departments uh, and that's decided after they conduct their interviews. Um, so we don't have specific limitations at this point, but it just depends on how strong uh, the applicant pool is and how uh, good of a match uh, their research interests are with our faculty members. 
Um, am I missing anything? Masters. So, uh, more more specific questions you have, please feel free to email us, and we will be uh, answering them one by one. And if they need to be answered by faculty members or, or departments, I will send them. I think we tried to answer more of the general questions now. Uh, some of you have been asking more specific questions relating to your current GPA or your current scores. So we will try to answer them uh, individually. So please uh, feel free to email us with your specific questions. Um, Aileen do you have any yeah. other? Yeah, I don't think I have anything else to say. I mean, thanks very much, really, for your participation and all these questions. And uh, please, uh, okay, somebody said here, please answer official transcripts for courses inside. I'm not sure I'm understanding some of these questions here, but if, please, if you, if you uh, can email your questions to the email address that we provided, um, uh, we can definitely answer all your uh, questions. Okay, thanks again for uh, taking part, and this will be uh, broadcast on the web uh, pretty soon. So thanks very much. And uh, I'm going to just say goodbye at this point and uh, thank everybody who participated. Bye.